Hi guys, and welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm going to be doing another discussion video about The Sims 4, and I know you're probably thinking, what the fuck, bitch? Literally every single video you upload is Sims 4 discussion videos, and it's because the video I'm working on right now is a Sims 3 video, by the way. Everybody, shut up. Shut up. Shut up. It's just gonna take a really long time to edit, so I was like, let me just do something easy, and I could literally talk about The Sims 4 for hours in things that I don't like about it and stuff like that, but this is not going to be a negative video, or at least not as negative of a video as the ones I've posted prior to this. Today I wanted to talk about, can The Sims 4 be fixed? What I think that they need to do to fix the game, because I do think it has a lot of potential as a Sims game, it just literally, they've never done anything to meet that potential. Alright, so the first thing I want to talk about is the base game and how they can fix that, because most people find that to be the biggest flaw within the game is the base game experience and how underwhelming it was. So point number one that I have for the base game is that they need to make the emotions a little more subtle and less in your face and obnoxious because right now that's literally every, whatever emotion your sim is feeling it literally overtakes their entire personality so the traits that you give them don't even matter anymore because an angry sim acts angry and a sad sim acts sad, happy sims act happy, there is no personality anymore. And so there's a couple ways that I think they could do that. They don't have to take away the system entirely, but I think they need to make the traits more prominent. And so I think that the first thing is that it should not change your entire walking the way the sim walks. That is so annoying. I don't, I don't, I hate that. Nobody does that in real life. Not, I've never met a single person. Oh, I'm sad. I'm going to look down and like droop my arms. Like, no, no, that doesn't happen in real life. This is real life, bitch. Um, well, The Sims isn't, but you know what I mean. And so the way that I think that they should fix the traits is pretty simple. They just need to come up with ways for it to influence your sim outside of just giving them moodlets. Because in The Sims 3, traits did not just give your sim random moodlets. For example, if you had the clumsy trait, it's just a tiny little thing, but your sim would be always tripping over themselves. Or they'd go to propose and they'd accidentally, like, almost drop the ring. Stuff like that, that you don't have in The Sims 4. Like, the traits do not make any small changes. They only just add a moodlet. So they need to stop doing that. Second of all, I think that they should bring back the personality system from the sims 2 in addition to the traits because i feel like every sim needs to either be clean or sloppy they need to either be shy or outgoing like this is this will give you more of a chance to not have your sim be in between on everything like if you have a sim that's a, got a green thumb a great cook and hates children okay but so it's just it's not sloppy or neat it's not this that or the other thing it's just in between on all those other personality aspects if you let them choose more for their sims personality, the sims will come out more unique. The next thing that they definitely need to change, and this irritates me, is the worlds. So, no, I don't think that they need to give us open worlds. I know they obviously cannot do that at this point. I mean, it would be nice. But I do think that they need to add a world in for, in a free base game update, that is just like, let's say 10 residential lots and 6 community lots. It's completely blank. And then, you know how you have the world map? Let you like, Give us different world maps to choose from. You can pick which world map you want. And I don't mean like the layout of the lots, just like the overlay, like the image. And then choose a theme. If I want my theme to be city, then they'll have these buildings load in as the backdrop. This building load in, da 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 So you can, like, even though, yeah, you can't really edit where the build, where the backdrop looks like or anything, at least you're giving your person, or your town a little more of a personal touch and deciding exactly what you want it to look like when you're making it. I think that if they did that, that would already make the game so much better, just letting you build your own town from scratch. Another thing I think that they should add in a free base game update, which I know a lot of people are going to be like, no, you're wrong about that, they're not going to do that, that's too much work, is that they should expand every single world that they already have in the game by adding like three or four or five more lots. And even if they have to, this is what I don't understand, like yes, you have to have 2D worlds, maps, that's fine. If you have to have closed world, that's fine, but why do the worlds have to be so small? Hmm? Huh? Answer it, bitch. I mean, they could literally make- expand the world so much to where you have to, like, actually scroll across them when you're on the world map to, like, find wherever you want to go. That would make it so much more immersive and feel like, wow, this is a real place. It's huge. There's stuff to do. The Sims 1 worlds were not tiny, people. They were literally not tiny at all. Well, some of them were, but for the most part, it was a freaking huge world, and you had so many to choose from. So that's just two things that I think that would already make it so much better. They need to add more realistic social reactions to things, so if you're cheated on, I don't want them to go from... Okay, this is the thing. Let's say you just got cheated on, but you have so many other happy moodlets that are outweighing the sad moodlet or the angry moodlet from witnessing someone cheating on you. 
then your sim is going to be happy and they're not even going to go after that sim. Like, no, I want them to target that sim. I want them to go and slap them. I want there to be drama. I want the sims to actually act like they care about what's happening in their lives instead of just being like a dag dag and like standing there smiling, doing nothing all the time. Like, bitch, come on now. What is this? So I feel like if they really did that, they expanded on the personalities and expanded on the world and gave us our own world that we could create basically from scratch. And then they also made better social reactions to things and just added a little more drama. That would automatically like up that base game by like a thousand percent. The next thing I think that they need to do is make a Generations expansion pack. And I have a lot of ideas for how I think that they could pull it off. First of all, what I would like to see in the Generations expansion pack, functional high school, functional elementary school. I want to be able to take my kids to school. I want activities like Boy Scouts, cheerleading, ballet, soccer, like sports and stuff. And they don't even have to be like activities you go and see. They could be rabbit hole activities like you would do in The Sims 3. But then give us like a soccer ball object or give us, you know, let our Sims come home and practice their cheer routines and stuff like that. Just little tiny things to make it feel like they're actually in those activities. That would be great. Um, I want to see, this is like a concept that I thought of the other day, and I thought it was a really good one, but someone else told me it was stupid, but I'm going to share it anyway. Um, <laughs> so I think that they should add age-based traits. So what I mean by that is, let's say you have a toddler, and they're aging into a child, or let's say you have a child, and they're aging into a teen, and they have a negative relationship with both their parents, then they might automatically pick up an age-based trait of rebellious, and that'll then follow them through to the end of their life. And let's say a teenager that had, a uh, or not a teenager, but like a child that had a lot of friends, they might turn into a teenager and get the popular trait. So then your sim, and this could affect their whims too. So bring whims back and have it be like, okay, your sim has the popular age-based trait. So they're going to get all of these different whims about making friends, talking to people, having social interactions. And then let's say you're a young adult and you had all these romantic relationships. Once you age into a middle or a middle adult, once you age into an adult and you're at your midlife point, since you had so many romantic relationships, let's give them, like, a vain trait or something like that, where it's, like, they worry about their looks, and you have to put, like, they want, they have whims to, like, put wrinkle cream on and stuff like that. Little things to, like, develop their personality. Because you do, your personality does change as you grow up. And it is, it should be based on what you've done prior to, you know, aging up in their life. So I think that that would really help. And let's say you have a sim that had never done anything athletic. Maybe they, uh sit around a lot and eat and stuff like that maybe when they age into an elder they get mobility issues or something like a trait like that and then you have to buy them one of those little lifts that go on the stairs or give them a cane or something that would just be so that would just add so much depth to the characters and you could come up with like a couple a handful of them for each life state and you pick one up depending on how you lived your life you pick one of the traits up and you carry it through all the way to the end so you can have a rebellious you can have an elder that is rebellious vain in mobility issues or popular in Nurture stuff like that random little things like that. I think that that would really flesh it out And by the end you would see how your sim has developed and grown and it really feels like you're playing through generations of people So I think that that would be a really smart thing for them to add I also think that then since it's a generations pack They should have some family activities that you can do like make a picnic blanket bring a picnic blanket back That would be nice because we had those in the sims 3 and they were really nice You could go anywhere and literally just set a picnic down and eat um, what else do I want to see? I have like a lot of notes here, but I don't want to- I can't obviously ask for everything. Just little outdoor activities for the family to do. It's like, I don't know, I feel like with Generations, you really want to have a fleshed out backyard where you can have family get-togethers and stuff. So like trampolines, um, I can't even think of other stuff right now. <laughs> uh, uh, t -t 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 horseshoes, stuff like that. Little things for your family to do when they're having like get-togethers and stuff. Add anniversary events, anniversary date events. Add... Uh, bachelor and bachelorette parties bring those back bring funerals in just so much stuff that they could do with a generations expansion pack to make it better and i do just want to say br make some of these features that you give to each life state don't let every single person sim do it make it depend on what age trait they get so like a sim an elder sim that doesn't have mobility issues doesn't need to use a cane but one that does needs to use the cane right because not every old person automatically needs to have a cane um or a teen that's rebellious, let them pull pranks, but teens that aren't rebellious, they don't need to be pulling pranks. Maybe, like, a popular teen sim can have the option to throw bigger parties, or, you know, just stuff like that. I think they should add the ability for kids to run away again, because that was a nice little feature. I think they should just, yeah, focus on fleshing out each life stage individually within this expansion pack, if they ever make it. I don't know if they're going to. And then, obviously, what I said about school, and then the age traits, I think that that's a really good idea. Obviously, it's not going to happen, but it'd be cool in my opinion, and they really need to flesh out whims, even in just in the base game, make whims, bring them back, make them useful, 
I don't understand what their thought process was by, oh, let's just make them able to disable the whip. Why? You guys can't figure out a way to make them good? It's not that hard. It's not complicated at all. So really, I think that if they made those simple changes to the base game, and then they added a generation expansion pack on top of it, most of the gameplay issues, in my opinion, that I have will have been rectified. So I think that they should really look into doing stuff like that. Obviously, they're not going to see this video. And I'm sure like a lot of people do not agree with me that those are the issues with the game or this is not this, that or the other thing isn't the issue. To me, these are the issues I have. Family gameplay is completely missing. Uh, your Sims don't feel unique. So age based traits would make them feel unique. I mean, obviously, you still have Sims that have overlapping traits, but you have that in every Sims game. And I think that also just making the traits affect the sim more than the emotions do would also make them feel unique. And the last thing that I want to say, because I just remembered this for the base game, is I think that they should implement a system of mixed emotions. Because, to be honest, you could feel one emotion, or you could feel more than one emotion at a time, but in The Sims 4, you can't. You're either happy, sad, or da 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 So let's say, let's say you're really sad and you have, like... I don't know, you have 14 points of anger and then 15 points of sad. Normally you'd just be sad, but what if since they're so close to, in the, to each other in the number of points, they merge together and make like a new emotion of like frustration or something like that. Like, cause, I don't know, I just feel like it doesn't make sense that they have all these things, like they could just go through a divorce and da 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 and still be happy just because there's like a painting on the wall or something. Like, no, that's not how anything should work. So if they change that, and then all the other stuff that I mentioned, I would honestly probably start playing The Sims 4 again, because first of all, it'd be really fun to develop your own town. Second of all, it'd be really fun to watch unique Sims develop throughout the game. And just all these different features would add so many quality of life improvements. It would just be awesome. And if they don't do this for The Sims 4, I would like to see this stuff in The Sims 5, because I still think they're good ideas. And if you disagree with me, well, poop on you. No, I'm just kidding. You're allowed to disagree. But anyways, guys, let me know in the comments down below what you think they need to do to change The Sims 4 and make it better. Um, if you agree with me, if you disagree with me, I'm open to discussion as long as you're not mean. Don't be mean, bitch. Um, but anyways, if you enjoyed the video, leave a like, and if you really enjoyed the video, subscribe for more. I make a lot of discussion videos lately, I don't know why, I guess I just have a lot of stuff to say. But I am making some more Sims 3 content, which there's a little bit on my channel already. And, um, yeah, hopefully good things for the channel in the future. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and have a wonderful day.